Hey everyone, Path here. Now in this video, I want to talk about three physics ideas that you may not have heard of that I find super interesting. We're going to be speed running through them. So if you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. The first idea I want to talk about is directly related to the quantum weirdness known as wave particle duality. This is the idea that things that we traditionally consider to be particles sometimes behave like waves, and things that we traditionally consider to be waves sometimes behave like particles. Now, a quick way to explain this is that waves and particles are just models that humans have come up with to try and describe the universe around them. However, the models aren't quite accurate enough for describing what actually goes on, and what we really need is a model that combines the behaviors of both, something like a particle. But the specific idea I want to bring up here is known as the de Broglie wavelength. This equation here tells us one half of the wave-particle duality story. It talks about how things that we've traditionally considered to be particles can behave like waves. Or at least it tells us the wavelength that this wave should have. For example, electrons are traditionally thought to behave like particles. But if we pass them through two slits and then see how they end up on this screen here, then they display some interesting wave-like behavior. This is known as the double slit experiment, and although we actually detect electrons one by one, as we would expect for particles, the overall pattern that we see on the screen after lots and lots of electrons have been detected looks more like that of a wave than of a particle. Now that last bit is a very hand wavy explanation, but there are lots of brilliant videos on the double slit experiment on YouTube. What I want to talk about is the de Broglie wavelength. When matter, or stuff that has mass, ends up behaving like a wave, the wavelength that this wave seems to have is given by h, the Planck constant, divided by the momentum of the stuff we happen to be considering. Now this is interesting physics idea number one, and there'll be some resources in the description below if you want to find out more. Let's move on to the second one. Now the second thing I want to discuss here is a concept used for mathematical convenience in an area of physics known as thermodynamics. Now this is the area that deals with heat and work and energy transfers and quite often temperature. Now, in many calculations that we end up doing when studying thermodynamics, we often see a factor of 1 divided by the temperature of our system, T. In fact, we commonly see a factor of 1 divided by Kb multiplied by T, where Kb is known as the Boltzmann constant. For this reason, it becomes very useful to define a completely new quantity, often labeled beta, which is equal to 1 divided by Kbt. Basically, this way in our mathematics, we don't have to keep writing 1 divided by kbt all the time. We can just replace it with beta. Now, this factor, 1 divided by kbt, or as we're now calling it beta, it's given a variety of different names, such as thermodynamic inverse temperature, because it's the inverse of the temperature, or thermodynamic beta, or even sometimes coldness. And we've seen one use of the thermodynamic beta, essentially mathematical convenience, not having to write 1 divided by kbt all the time. But actually, there's a more fundamental interpretation of beta as well, which deserves a video of its own. The aim for this video, though, is to make you familiar with this idea that there is a quantity defined as the thermodynamic beta or inverse temperature or coldness, and potentially give you some resources so you can find out more if you'd like to. Let's move on to the third quick physics idea that I want to discuss. This is known as the Reynolds number and is used in the study of fluid dynamics. The Reynolds number, as you may have guessed, is just a number. It's a unitless or dimensionless quantity, which means it doesn't have any units. And its purpose is to give us some very important information about how a particular fluid happens to be flowing in the system that we're considering. Now, a fluid is basically anything that can flow. And so liquids and gases are most commonly labeled as fluids. And for a particular fluid that we happen to be considering that is flowing through some region of space, we can calculate the Reynolds number. Now, the lower we calculate the Reynolds number to be, the more the fluid is flowing smoothly with sheets of particles flowing past each other. And we call this kind of fluid flow laminar flow because laminar just means sheet. And as we've already seen, the particles or whatever makes up the fluid is flowing past each other in nice smooth sheets. But a large Reynolds number points to turbulent, chaotic flow in our fluid. Now, the Reynolds number is defined using this equation here actually initially is defined as a ratio of two quantities, but basically it boils down to what we're seeing here. 
Rho is the density of the fluid we want to be considering. Density is the amount of mass per unit volume of our fluid. U is the speed of the flow, and this quantity mu is known as the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. This is basically a measure of how sticky the fluid is while it's flowing. On a very basic level, it's a measure of how well the particles in the fluid stick to each other. Now L is a quantity known as the characteristic length or characteristic dimension. It essentially allows us to set the scale of the problem. Without this scale, our diagram here could basically be representing a large range of scenarios. It could be representing juice flowing through a straw, or water flowing through a pipe, or even honey flowing through a tanker, cylindrically shaped of course. And in each case, the characteristic length would be a different size. And of course, it's important to note that the units of all of these quantities in the numerator and denominator cancel, hence the Reynolds number is a dimensionless or unitless quantity. It's just a number. Once we know the Reynolds number of the system we're studying, we can find out something about how it flows. Is it laminar flow? Is it turbulent flow? Or is it somewhere in between, maybe on the boundary between the two regimes? The Reynolds number is really useful because it allows us to compare fluid flows that would be otherwise very, very different to each other. Maybe they're on very different length scales or maybe they're using very different fluids. But if these two fluid flows have similar Reynolds numbers, then in many ways the two flows are similar to each other. We might even be able to use one of them, the one that's more convenient for us to actually set up in real life, to reasonably model the other fluid flow, for example. It is of course a lot more complicated than that, so once again, if you want to find out more, resources are in the description below. So those are three hopefully simple physics ideas that I find super interesting, and I hope you do too. The de Broglie wavelength, the thermodynamic inverse temperature, and the Reynolds number. If you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. I have some merch out now, you can check it out on the store tab of my channel if you're interested. And please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for all your support as always, and I will see you very soon.